Hey everyone, I'm Patrick Brown and welcome to the new monthly project. This is number 25 and the theme for this month is MCU fan art. So my patrons have got this project theme, have gone away for the month and drawn up anything they want within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, also known as the MCU. So this means all of the movies uh, since about 2008, Iron Man was the first, all the way through till now. Um, there's also TV shows that are in the MCU. There's just so many possibilities. The MCU is one of my absolute passions. I love all of the movies. I've always been a big Marvel fan, so this is going to be really exciting for me. And I think everyone's had a lot of fun with it. So uh, yeah, let's dive straight into this. And while we're on the topic of MCU fan art, here's one that I did a while ago. With all the Marvel villains hanging out at Stan's bar. And you got Stan Lee up the back there. Thanos having an arm wrestle with Loki. You got the Mandarin with uh, Iron Man's head over there. And, uh, and a bit of a pool game going on over here. And there's also a Civil War piece. And most recently I did a big zombie piece of everyone who has died in the MCU. And I did this for last Halloween. Alright, let's get into it. So each month I select three entries to uh, critique and I've picked Gavin, Lucas and Paul's submissions. Really cool pieces here, I love what you've done. Gavin has done Thor from Love and Thunder, Lucas has got Daredevil here and Paul has done the Silver Surfer. These are awesome and we're going to critique these soon. Alright, let's dive into these submissions, these are awesome. Alberto has done Thanos here, it looks like you've done it in traditional pencils. That came out great, these colours are awesome. You're very talented, I love that traditional style. And Carl has done Iron Man and War Machine. And I believe this was Iron Man 2, this scene, when they're taking down all them robots. This is great. Have a look at that line work. Really nice details going through there. And Chris has done a poster over here. It's more like a comic cover, I'd say, for The Winter Soldier. The Winter Soldier has to be one of the best MCU movies, in my opinion. This looks really cool. Great work on that. You've got a whole set up there. That's awesome. Next up, we've got Carlos, Jason, and Jose. And have a look at this amazing work from Carlos here. This is the Mark I from Iron Man 1. Those details are amazing. That rustic look, that is just absolutely beautiful work there. Awesome piece there. And Jason, <laughs> this is awesome. This is from the new Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. I love your caricatures of uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. That zombie one's unreal. These are so cool. And this was your second submission here as well. Stan Lee hanging out with the watchers. I love seeing these. That's so great. And Jose, you've done She-Hulk from the new show. I love your style. The more I zoom in, I'm just so impressed how clean these lines are. They're just amazing. You've got a really nice style. So clean and professional looking. She looks unreal. That's great. All right, next up, we've got Jazud and Renee. This Hulk piece is really cool. With Thor facing off to him. Very nice setup there. Loving those details in Hulk there. All that chest hair. That's unreal. He looks very edgy. Very awesome. And Renee, have a look at this. This is unreal. Captain America smashing Thanos. He's also holding the hammer there. Absolutely epic scene. This is great. So dynamic. That's really good. All right, next up, we've got Abby, Luke, and Brandon. And you've got She-Hulk here, Abby. She looks really cool. Very nice clean lines there. Nice to see you practicing more with your rendering as well. Putting some shadowing in there. She looks really cool. And Luke, you've done Moon Knight here. That's really cool. I like how you've got the, uh, the mirror there of the, uh, you know, the split personalities. Nice work there. And Brandon, this is Namor. He's going to be in the new Black Panther movie. I'm really glad you did this. I was hoping to see a Namor. Can't wait to see what he's like in the movies. And this artwork is really cool. I especially love all those details that you've put in here. That's just so crisp and clean. Really nice work. All right, next up, we've got Olivier, Patrick, and Jason. And you've got Groot over here and Rocket. The silhouettes of Rocket and Groot up there. And you've got little Groot here. Zipping around on one of the rockets that he's just blasted from that gun. <laughs> That's so cool. And Patrick, your Scarlet Witch is looking really nice. Love those black fingers. Very menacing. That's a really good likeness of uh, Elizabeth Olsen as well. She looks great. Awesome work. And Jason, you've done the Green Goblin here in a chibi style. Really nice line work there. I love the details that you've put through the, uh, the glider there. And his suit looks really cool. That's such a cool looking chibi character. All right, next up we've got Virgilio Zemnoxus. Sorry if I've said that wrong. And Craig. And Virgilio, you've got your Captain Marvel over here. 
She's looking very powerful. Love that energy coming off her there. Very cool stuff. And we got some She-Hulk here hanging out with her cousin Hulk. Nice work on that. They look really, really cool. And Craig, you've done a whole scene here of Guardians of the Galaxy. Really cool action going on in here. That's a nice setup with all those and the way they're like spreading out. I love the placement of all of those characters. All right, so as usual, Sai has done multiple submissions, and there's just so much to go on here. I can't believe you've been this busy, Sai. And it's not only these six, you did another three on top of that. So you've done nine submissions in this one month. I just can't believe it. That's great. Spider-Man versus Doc Ock, amazing. Namor, we've got Captain America versus Thanos. This one's epic. You've got so much going on. The Winter Soldier, Thor, Groot, and Rocket. That's looking really cool. Shang-Chi, that's awesome. And you've also got Red Skull over here. That's looking great. Thor, Love and Thunder as well. And Iron Man. These are unreal, Sai. I just can't believe all that effort that you've put into it. Amazing work. You're a real talent, mate. Keep it up. And last up is Machiavelli Art. And you've got Doctor Strange here. This is looking super clean. Very nice. I know you mentioned you're inspired by one of my Doctor Stranges on Instagram. It's really cool to see you practicing. And I love seeing a different pose of that as well, like really pushed toward us more and having all those tentacles and everything bursting out the back. Nice work on that one. That's epic. All right, let's start the critiques. Uh, first up, we've got Gavin. And you've got this Thor Love and Thunder piece here that you've done. I really like the energy that you've got through this and the pose. She looks great too, Lady Thor there. The line work's looking nice and crisp. That's good. I think the main thing overall is probably just with Thor. And it's just a couple of tweaks with the anatomy and just some of the lines as well. Here's just a slight preview of how I would uh, change the face. There we go. So that's kind of probably what I would do. So I feel like the teeth needed to be dropped down a little bit more. And to be bigger as well. See these front teeth? Just want to have them a lot bigger and more spaced out. And have that more of a wrap around. And I also kind of wrapped up these bottom teeth a little bit more as well. So just in this example, I've drawn over a skull uh, with the new structure. And if I just fade that back so you can see that a little bit more, uh, this is how the skull fits the new face. So you can see the difference if I flick back and forth the top of the hair. You know, the, we need to, to allow more room for the top of the, uh, the actual skull head. So if I just take that away and show you a bit more, you can kind of see the difference. Just really needs more room for that skull. And yeah, it was really just those teeth with the other issue there. So just, just fixing that up like that. And I think you'd be all right. And just with the leg, I'd probably do it more like this. I've just re-rendered a bit over the tops. And I'd probably just steer away from doing these harsh kind of black lines through the detailing in the leg. And same with this one here. I'd probably go a bit more like this. So I've just redone it and uh, painted in those kind of details instead of doing the black lines. I think that might be a better approach just to keep things a little more subtle and if you want to you can have a couple of little lines coming through just more minimal though so kind of like this just for that extra tiny little bit of detailing and I'll put a little crease there for the fold and maybe yeah you can probably do a little bit more of a thicker dark line under the knee there and then come up and then a little bit of a darker one there but the rest can just be left kind of like that See that kind of difference there? Just how it's a little bit more a bit more subtle. So those details can, can just be in the rendering. And you can also have the anatomy showing through just a little as, as some rendering as well. Kind of did a little bit of cross hatching coming up. This shirt detailing as well. I would love to see that kind of more uh, warped onto the anatomy. It feels like it's just a little bit too flat and front on. So if that just folded with the, the fabric would have been great as well. Okay, so I've just made some adjustments on the arm here. I felt like the anatomy was just a bit off in the, the shoulder. So that's the original one there. Uh, and then I just feel like we needed to have some more of those muscles. Just one of those shoulder muscles to come in like this. So uh, you can see there how it kind of would go. And then the collarbone comes in here and meets with the, uh, the shoulder that comes up there. Whereas before, you can see it kind of, there's a big muscle there that should probably be more in the middle. So if I put that red bit back over, you can see where how, how different the anatomy is. So there we go. I brought that back up and you've got three, it's, the shoulder's kind of broken into three muscles because Thor is so ripped. <laughs> um, so I've broken those into those main three sections. The rest was just about really 
kind of smoothing out, kind of like I did with that leg. Just a few less of these black dark lines coming through the details, like even if they're just a little thinner or just lessened, you see, just put a couple of little nicks here and there to resemble where the anatomy goes. Same with that thumb there, I just feel like we need to have a bit more structure through the top part of this fist, so just through there. And that back arm there, I really feel like that fist is too big, it needs to be pushed back further, so I've redrawn how I think the, the back arm should be, the shoulder there, tricep, bicep, and then really push that forearm back into the distance more with a bit of foreshortening. And you can see how the, the kind of difference there, so that's probably how I'll do it. You can also push that axe back a little further as well. But there you go, Gavin. I hope that helps. Um, there's a bit of a comparison there before and after of a couple of those changes there. She looks really good. If I was going to do anything, I'd, I'd probably just bring her bum down a little bit more. So I feel like it was just out a little bit too far there. But um, yeah, it's only a minor change there. And you may also want to do like a little slight glow just behind to separate her from Thor just slightly. I can even fade that down a little bit. So it's just subtle. But yeah, if you had that in, that'll just break her away from Thor a little bit more. But apart from that, great work. I think that's all it needs. And um, yeah, thanks so much. All right, next up is Lucas. And you've done Daredevil. Such an awesome character. And I'm really glad you did this. He looks awesome. Really cool suit design. Those textures are looking really good as well. So let's dive straight into the critique. All right, so uh, first thing I'm noticing, I think it's just the size difference between him and the background. We've lost a lot of that dynamic range because everything seems so close together, like they're at the same level. So what I recommend is pushing those buildings back further. I actually did a background, which I had before. Uh, this is a background that I've done before and I'll put like a nice fade behind. But I feel like we need to kind of push the buildings back further. Um, and then we're also going to work with Daredevil here, which I've cut out. All right, so I've made some changes. Uh, and I would recommend putting the arm out forward more. So the original, you can see it was kind of more sideways, which is fine, but I recommend just to make things more dynamic and to really make it seem that he's thrown this uh, stick, really bring that arm forward more, I reckon, into the foreground, like it's coming at you a little bit more. And I think that'll uh, tell the story a little bit better and you also get a bit of that foreshortening. Now I've made some other changes in the body as well. So, uh, so in the legs, you can kind of see I've pushed them back more so like i said before i'm trying to get everything more dynamic if you look at the top half of his body i've enlarged that and i've shrunken down the legs because before the legs were really large and the body was really small so i've just kind of you know flipped that around a bit and shrunk the legs so now i'd really love to get daredevil himself make him even bigger and put him more in the center uh, and i think that would work a lot better for your piece he doesn't have to be too large he can be more like Probably that, and then I'd probably just tilt that that little that stick more. Uh, probably have it more, maybe like that there. And then with this rope, I'm going to transform it more so it really looks like it's stretching out and working with that perspective more and really shrinking as it goes over this way. So if I press OK, and you can see what it was before, it was like that, and now it's kind of like this. So you've got a longer stretch here where it looks like it's coming at you, and you'd even probably get this part now and make it more like that. So it's actually with the perspective added to the actual, you know, the, the rope itself. So it's kind of working with the perspective more. Before it was just a bit too parallel like this. So we wanted to kind of have it more angled out that way. And also with this stick, I've just uh, fixed the contouring that wraps around uh, because it's coming at us more and it's supposed to be in the foreground. I felt that this was just too flattened off, these curves. So really push those around so that the contouring comes around more like this. Also, I'll just point out some adjustments that I made with the face. So uh, before it was uh, a little too low, the whole head. So with the new one, I've lifted the head up more. I've also made it just slightly more vertical as well. The other one was a bit too squared off. I also uh, made the eyes just slightly wider, a little bit more of a smirk. The mouth turned up a little bit more and a bigger nose. 
And that's about it. The only other thing I would say is uh, I feel like the line work might be just a little bit too straight in a lot of ways. There's, there's not a lot of balance through the line work. So especially the border that's around the outside, I like the thickness. Uh, I just kind of wish there was a little bit more just value or balance around it. So if I started to erase some parts to make it thinner, so you see how the, uh, the light is strongest on the top. So let's go thinner there, but where it's darker, let's make the lines bolder and thicker. So around the side, that's fine like that. Maybe on the shoulders, we'll go a little thinner like this. Doesn't have to be too thin, but um, that'll give it a lot of balance. And you can even keep that thick through there because it's so dark. But like here on the on the hand and the fist there, make that a little bit more thinner. Um, and that'll give it a lot more balance and value through the entire piece. And it will just look a lot more professional and, and just well put together. So here on the chest, how it's got that nice white shine glow around there. And now you've got this tapered out effect. So thick and then tapering out to thin and then tapering back out to thick again. And that's a really nice way to do outlines. So I recommend doing that. But yeah, there we go. And I recommend that kind of background, okay? So the original, I just felt, like I said, too clo everything's too close together. All right, Lucas, awesome work. Thanks so much. All right, last up is Paul. And let's do a bit of a critique on this. Silver Surfer, he looks awesome. Such a cool character. Uh, let's have a look. I really like that pose that you've got there. It's so dynamic. And it's just perfect for the Silver Surfer. Really, really cool. So let's get into the critique. Okay, Paul, so I've just done some outlines over the top of your character just because I'm going to re-render just some parts of the chrome. So I thought it would be easier if I just quickly just outline your character so that I can do like a fresh take on it. Because um, the reason I'm going to do it is I just want to do it as a guide on how to do some chrome. I feel like this is a really good job that you've got here. It works and it looks really good. Don't get me wrong. I think that's great. I just think it might be a little bit scattered. I feel like there's just a bit too much going on. So let's do a fresh take. I'll just put that new one over. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is try and focus on areas that'll be the, the darkest parts of the body first, and then we'll work our way out into smaller areas. So I'm gonna start with like under the bicep, and we're using complete blackness. So the, the really dark, heavy, we're gonna just go really bold in some areas. And the trick is to never hit the edge. So I'm never gonna hit the edge like this and fill that all in black and I don't want this edge here to be touched we basically want to have a bit of a white shine come off that and then we'll continue down in like a thin streak kind of like this and when we get to the abs I'm just going to do a nice massive thick streak right under it and I'll keep it a bit more like that a nice little gap in there a bit more like that okay so nice and bold in some areas but I'm really thinking about the anatomy and basically any shading underneath, you know, something. So these abs have a little cliff underneath. So I'm going to put a nice big thick shadow under them. And over here, again, I'm not going to touch that side. I'm just going to do some like thick parts under the abs like this. So little thick but parts, but I'm not going to touch this side. I don't want to touch that black. We want to have a nice white outline on that edge. So again, on this chest, I want to kind of make it so that it doesn't have like darkness underneath the peck. Usually if I was rendering another character, I'd have all under this peck would be completely dark, but I don't want to do it on this. I'm going to keep a nice white edge underneath uh, and that'll resemble like a nice shine, like a reflection from another side. The thing to understand about Chrome is it's got really, really dark contrast with really, really bright white colors. So the contrast is very extreme. So these black streaks are going to be the darkest part of the contrast. So it's cool to have a few uh, little thinner lines kind of meet and then some thicker ones, you know, kind of clash together a little bit. That's a cool little technique as well. But see how bold we can actually go underneath the leg there because I feel like it's, it's getting into a darker spot. So don't hold back there and really pack that in. So now that we've got that, I'll show you what we're going to do. I'll just render this and then we can do the next step. Okay, so I've just done some rendering over as if I would on any kind of character. So just kind of following the, uh, 
the uh, the shading of a character as long as the light source is like mine's directional from above kind of and uh so the trick is to make it look more chrome is any of these you see these cell shaded levels here where it breaks between the light and the dark there i usually get for, for the chrome effect i will then draw over the top and just follow these lines but i'll taper so i'll go thin and then really really thick in some areas like this and go up and then go super thin again and you get this kind of really cool chrome effect on that part of it so again i'm going to go really thin and then like super thick up here and then i'll go back to really thin again and i'll do it all over and that's really going to give us that kind of uh, chrome effect right through the character and it's going to look uh, way more detailed as well so that's a really good trick uh, when trying to do chrome see how that works so i'm just going to do some lighting on here now uh, and i'm kind of starting really soft and i'm just picking areas where uh, kind of like i normally would render like the above directional light source and then i'll combine that with some sharp uh, lighting as well so i'll pick the same kind of areas but um, yeah, I'll try and have a bit more of a finesse with it, doing these like curls, just like you were swooping it around and then connecting. But uh, the trick again is to also pick those areas where that dark streak might be on these edges of the shading, like here. And I'll run down that rim a little more and then I'll come back up and connect where the usual shading might go. But these little thin lines can go all around these rims and this is going to make it look very metallic and a lot sharper so we'll do a big swoop around there up and i might even come down and just like that and then again i'll do like some little white rims just around some of the other parts too you see how that's really making it look a lot more metallic so there we go that's that's probably how i would tackle uh that chrome effect and let's just do a quick comparison. So originally, um, you see what I mean? I just felt like it was just a little inconsistent in some of the lighting and stuff and a little confusing to see. So uh, I just wanted to clean that up. And yeah, I would tackle it with a lot more of those heavy shadows, really, really sharp. And um, yeah, that shading first. Remember how I would do probably a normal kind of shading, but then really chisel out those edges with another, another hard inked kind of valued brush and same with the the lighting as well i think that might be a good way to tackle it but um yeah yours is awesome mine's pretty dense and dark like i would you don't have to have that black area so dark i can lighten that down let's have a look and see what happens if i take the opacity of that down see i kind of like that more now um but it's up to you you could even do that down like a halfway like this if you don't want to go that harsh and then go over again and quickly do another layer of that over um, and start to really do an extra version of that with actual black like even darker in some of these areas and that'll add that next level of detail and really making it dense and dark and yeah just quite nice but there we go paul i hope that helps i hope you got a bit out of that i know it's a, a quite a large process but i think that's a, a quite a good way to go when it comes to chromes another thing i forgot to mention is you can also go around these white sharp bits as well if you want to go a little bit extra so similar to the how i did the other bit so thick and then thin so you can do it and um, that's another way to add just even more detail just keep adding those little rims around everything that you see and that's a really good technique all right, I'll leave it there. Okay, thanks, Paul. Well, that's it for this monthly project and the critiques. Um, I hope you got a bit out of that. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing these. So much great art. It's awesome to see. So don't forget, if you would like to join these monthly projects and be a part of it all, head over to patreon.com slash Patrick Brown. You can sign up and you can be a part of all of these projects. Uh, there's art competitions, a lot of tutorials, I'm releasing them every fortnight. I also give a lot of feedback uh, through the month. You get access to all of my art as well, so uh, yeah, jump on board. Alright everyone, I'm going to go plan the next monthly project and keep drawing. Okay, thanks everyone, see you later.